The following program has been provided by the Pacifica Radio Archives Preservation and Access Project. For more information, call 1-800-735-0230 or log on to PacificaRadioArchives.org. For six years, from 1960 to 1966, <coughs> Uh, Carlos Castaneda uh, served as an apprentice to a Yaqui Indian brujo or sorcerer named Don Juan. During those years, Mr. Castaneda was a graduate student in anthropology at the University of California at Los Angeles. His experiences with Don Juan led him into a strange world of shamanistic lore and psychedelic experience and adventures in what Mr. Castaneda calls states of non-ordinary reality, some of which were frightening in the extreme, and all of which are fascinating in the extreme. His experiences with Don Juan are recounted in a book which has been published this year by the University of California Press called The Teachings of Don Juan, A Yaqui Way of Knowledge. Mr. Castaneda is with us here at KPFA today and has agreed to discuss the book and his uh, experiences with Don Juan. Uh, let me begin by asking you uh, how you managed to meet this remarkable personality, uh, Don Juan, and can you give us some idea of what sort of a person he is? Um, I met Don Juan in a, uh, in a, in a rather uh, fortuitous manner. Um, I was doing a, at the time, in 1960, I was doing, a, a, I was collecting ethnographic data on the use of medicinal plants among the Arizona Indians. And a friend of mine, who was my guide on the, that enterprise, um, knew about Don Juan. He knew that Don Juan was a very uh, uh, learned man in the use of plants, and he intended to introduce me to him, but we never got around to, to do that. Uh, one day, uh, when I was about to return to Los Angeles, uh, we happened to see him at a bus station, and uh, my friend uh, went and talked to him, and uh, then he introduced me to to the man, and I began to to uh, tell him that uh, my interest was uh, plants, and that uh, especially uh, about peyote, because somebody had told me that uh, this old man was very learned and they use so peyote. And uh, we talked for, for about 15 minutes while he was waiting for his bus, or rather I did all the talking. And uh, he didn't say anything at all. He uh, kept on staring at me from time to time. And uh, that made me very uncomfortable because I didn't know anything about peyote. And uh, he seemed to have... Uh, seen through me. Uh, after about 15 minutes, you know, he got up and said that uh, perhaps I could come to his house sometime where we could talk with more ease, and he just left. And uh, uh, I thought that the, the attempt to meet him was a, a failure because I didn't get anything out of him. And uh, my friend thought that uh, it was very common to get a reaction like that from the old man, because he was very eccentric. But uh, I, I returned again, and, uh, or perhaps a month later, and uh, I began to uh, uh, search for him. I didn't know where he lived, but uh, I, uh, I found out later what, where his house was, and I came to, to see him. Uh, he, uh, I, I, at first, you know, I approached him as a, uh, as a friend. I, I, I like, uh, for some reason, I like the way he looked at me, at the gas, at the, uh, at the bus depot. There was something very peculiar about the way he, uh, he stares at people. And, uh, he doesn't stare, usually he doesn't look at anybody's tray in the eye, but sometimes he, he does that, and it's very, uh, remarkable. And, uh, it was more that stare which made me go to see him than my interest in anthropological work. So I uh, 
came various times and we developed a sort of friendship. He has a great sense of humor and that eased the things up. About how old a man was he when you met him? Oh, he was in his late 60s, sort of 69 or something. Like that. Mm. Now, you identify him in the book as a, uh, as a brujo. Um, can you give us some idea of what this means and to what extent uh, Don Juan is connected, if at all, with some sort of an ethnic background, uh, uh, a tribal well, uh, background, or is he pretty much of a lone wolf? The, the word brujo is the uh, Spanish exception, and uh, it uh, could be translated in various ways. In English, it could, could render a sorcerer or witch, medicine man, or herbalist or curer. And of course, the technical word shaman. Um, Don Juan does not uh, relate uh, or does not uh, define himself in any of those ways. He thinks of himself that perhaps he is a man of knowledge. That's the term he uses, he uses man of knowledge. A man of knowledge. Or one who knows. He uses that uh, interchangeably. Uh, and as far as his uh, tribal, uh, allegiances, I think he, the one is very much, uh, I think his emotional ties are with the Yaquis of Sonora, since his father was a Yaqui from one of the towns in, in Sonora, one of the Yaqui towns. Uh, but his mother was from Arizona. Uh, thus he has sort of a divided origin, which makes him uh, very much a a marginal man. Uh, then, uh, at the present, he uh, he has family in Sonora, but he doesn't live there. Uh, he lives there part of the time, perhaps. So. Does he have any um, uh, formal livelihood? How does he earn his way in the world? Uh, I I wouldn't be uh, uh, able to to. Uh, to discuss that, rather, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that I could uh, at the moment. Now, um, one um, one point I'd like to clear up. Uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it's something that um, I wondered about as I read the uh, the book. Um, the book consists in large part of uh, recordings of your own experiences um, uh, in uh, using the. Uh, the herbs and mushrooms and so on and uh, that, uh, that Don Juan introduced you to, and then long conversations with Don Juan. How were you able, just as a technical problem, how were you able to keep track of your experiences over such a long period of time? How were you able to record all of this? Um, it uh, seems difficult, but uh, since one of the uh, items uh, of the learning process is a recapitulation of whatever you experience, in order to remember everything that happened, um, I... Um, I had to make mental notes of all the steps, of all the things that I, I saw, all the events that occurred during the, the, the states of, let's say, expanded consciousness or whatever. And uh, then it was easy to translate them into writing after, uh, because I had them all uh, uh, meticulously uh, filed, sort of, in, uh, in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. That's uh, as the, ex uh, the experience itself goes, but then the questions and answers, I simply wrote them down. Oh, you were able to I take notes while you were... Uh, not at the very beginning of our relation, you see, I never took any notes. I took notes in a covert manner. I mm -hmm. had a pad of, of paper inside my pockets, you know, my big pockets of my jacket, and I used to write inside my pockets. It's, it's a technique, you mm -hmm. know, that ethnographers use sometimes yes. to take covert notes. And then, of course, you have to work very hard to decipher it while you're written. <laughs> yes. But it has to be done very quickly, see, very fast. As soon as, they, as soon as you have time, you cannot postpone anything. You cannot let it go for the next day or something, because you lose everything. Since I think I work compulsively, I was capable of writing down everything that took place uh, very, very shortly after the events themselves. 
There, I must say that uh, many of the dialogues are, uh, are extremely uh, fascinating uh, documents. Uh, Don well, Juan, uh, uh, as you record his remarks, has a certain amount of eloquence and imagination. Well, Juan say, uh, it's very, uh, 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 he's very artful with the use of words, and uh, he uh, thinks of himself as, uh, as a talker, although he doesn't like to talk. But he thinks that talking is his predilection, as other men of knowledge have other predilections, like uh, movement, balance. He says talking. Thus, it was my good fortune to find a man that would have the same predilection that I have. Now, one of the things that's most impressive about the, uh, about the book um, is the, uh, the remarkable chances that you uh, seem to have taken under Don Juan's uh, tutelage. That is, he introduced you to various chemical substances, substances um, some of which uh, clearly, I suppose, could have been fatal if they had not been used uh, carefully. How did you manage to work up sufficient trust in this man to, uh, uh, to uh, <clears throat> down all of the concoctions that he put before you? The, uh, the, um, the way the book's presented, you know, it seems uh, to heighten some sort of dramatic sequence, which is, uh, I'm afraid, uh, uh, not true in real life. The, there are enormous gaps in between in which ordinary things took place mm -hmm. that are not included. I didn't include it in the book because they did not pertain to the system I wanted to portray. Mm -hmm. So I, I just simply took them away, you see, and that means that, that, means that the gaps between those very height states, yes. you know, uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, since they are removed, it seems that it's a continuous crescendo, this kind of sequence leading to a very dramatic uh, 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 solution. But uh, in, in real life, it was a very simple matter because it took years in between, in, it took months, uh, months passed in between them. And uh, in the meantime, we did all, all kinds of things. We even went out hunting, he told me, how to trap things. I said traps were uh, very old, very old, old ways of setting up traps and how to catch rattlesnakes. And he told me how to prepare rattlesnakes, in fact. And uh, uh, so that eases up, you see, the, 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 the distrust or the fear. I see. So there was a chance for you to build up a tremendous amount of confidence in this. Yes, time. we spent a lot of time together, and and then he never told me what he was going to do, anyways. And by the time I realized, I was already too deep into mm -hmm. the event to to turn or turn back. Now, the the heart of the book, uh, uh, at least as far as my reading was concerned, certainly the most fascinating part of the book has to do with the. Um, your experiences with what you, you term non-ordinary reality. And many of these experiences, as you recount them, have a, a great deal of, uh, of, of cogency to them. That is, they are experiences that seem to come uh, um, very close to uh, um, demonstrating the validity of practices like divination. And then on the other hand, you have experiences that at the time seem to have been tremendously vivid experiences of flight and of being transformed into various animal forms. And often you, you, you suggest a, a sense of some ultimate revelation taking place. Um, what sense do you make of these experiences uh, uh, now as you look back on them all? Uh, what uh, seems to have been valid about them, and how was Don Juan, do you feel, able to seem to control or predict what these experiences would be? <clears throat> well, as far as making sense out of them, I think uh, as, a, as, as an anthropologist, I, I could, uh, the way I have done it, I could use them as uh, grounds for uh, set up a, let's say, a problem in anthropology. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I understand them or use them in any, in any, any way. I could just employ them to make, to construct a system, perhaps. Uh, but if I would view them from the point of view of a non-European man, maybe a shaman or perhaps a yaki, uh, they are, I think the, 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 the experiences are 
or uh, they are they are designed to produce the the uh, the knowledge that reality of consensus is only a, a, a very small segment of the total range of what we could feel as real. Um, if we could learn to code reality or stimuli the way a shaman does, perhaps we could elongate our range of what we call real. What do you mean by, by that? How does a, a, uh, a shaman like um, Don Juan um, code stimuli? Uh, for instance, in the, the idea that a man could actually turn into a cricket or a mountain lion or a bird is to me, this is my personal uh, uh, conclusion, it's, it's, it's a way of, of intaking a stimuli and readapting it. I, I suppose the stimuli is there. Anybody who would take an hallucinogenic uh, plant or uh, a chemical you know, produced in the laboratory, I think would experience more or less the same distortion in quotes, because distortion of reality. But uh, the shamans, I think, have learned through usage and uh, in thousands of years, perhaps, of practice, they have learned to reclassify the stimuli and encode it in a different way. We, the only way we have to code it is as hallucination, uh, madness. That's our system of codification. Mm -hmm. We cannot conceive that one could turn into a crop, for instance. This was uh, this was your experience uh, yes, under uh, Don Juan's mm -hmm. tutelage. Uh, I cannot, as as a European, I, I refuse to believe that one could do it. Mm -hmm. You see that, uh, but uh, but it was a tremendously vivid experience when you yeah. when you had it. Well, it was it was I could say you know it was real. Mm -hmm. That's my my only way of uh, describing it. Uh, but but now to see that things over, if I will be allowed to analyze it. I think, you know, what he was trying to do was to teach me another way of uh, coding reality, another way of putting it into a, into a, a, a propitious frame that could, again, turn into a different interpretation. I thought the, the passage in the book where uh, this um uh, these very different orientations uh, toward reality that you had and Don Juan had, uh, the point at which it came through at least most clearly to me was uh, the point in which you questioned him about your own experience of apparent flight. Uh, and uh, you finally came around to, to asking uh, if you had been chained to a rock, uh, would you still... Uh, would Don Juan still yeah. feel that you had flown? And yeah. his, his answer was, in that case, you would have flown with the chain and the rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he, he alludes, you know, that uh, uh, I think what he, he means, what he meant to say is that um, uh, one never really changes. You see, as a European, my, my mind is set, my cognitive units are set in a sense. I would admit only a total change. Uh, for me to change would mean that a, that a person mutates totally into a bird, and that's the only way I could I could understand it. But I think what he means is something else, something uh, much more sophisticated than that. Uh, my 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 system is very rudimentary. I see. It's not. Uh, uh, it lacks the, the sophistication that Don Juan has. But I, I, I cannot pinpoint, actually, what he means by... Things, what he means that one never changes, really. There's something else, and all the processes yes, taking I, place. I, I, it is difficult to focus on this. I think uh, I remember Don Juan's line was, you flew as a man flies, yeah, but he insisted yeah. that you flew. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's another remarkable statement he makes, and uh, it is... Uh, in the discussion of the reality of the episode, he says, that is all there is in reality, what you felt. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Yeah. He, uh, uh, th th this, Don Juan is a very sophisticated thinker, really. It's, uh, uh, it's not easy to, to uh, come to grips with him. You see, I had tried various times, you know, to, 
to sort of wrestle with him intellectually, and he always uh, he always comes the the victor. You know, he's very artful, and that they and he posed once the idea to me that uh, uh, the whole of the, the totality of the universe is it's just perception, and uh, it's how we perceive things, and uh, there are no facts, only interpretations, and those are nearly. I'm nearly quoting him, see, paraphrasing him as yes. close as I can. And uh, perhaps he's right in that sense, or, or uh, perhaps I think he's right in that sense, is the facts are nothing else but interpretations that our brain makes of stimuli. So if, I, if that's such, whatever I felt was, of course, the important thing. Well, now, one of the, uh, one of the uh, aspects of what we normally call reality that seems most important to us is that of uh, coherence or consistency uh, from experience to experience. And I was impressed by um, the fact that the experiences you had uh, uh, under peyote uh, seem to have, in your recordings, a remarkable coherence from experience to experience. Um, I'd like to question you about this. There is an image that appeared in the experiences, which you call mescalito, mm -hmm. and the, it seems as if this image uh, appears uh, again and again with great consistency, that the, the general sense of the experience, the sound of it, the feel of it, is is very much the same from time to time. Is, am I accurate in saying Yes, very, very much. Well, how do you, how do you make sense of that fact? Well, I'd, uh, it's either that... Uh uh, they had, I had two interpretations. Mine would be that uh, it's product of the indoctrination I went through, those long periods of discussions, and uh, 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 where instruction was given. Well, now, did Don Juan ever tell you how Mescalito was to look? No, 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 not that look. Once I constructed, I think, the composite in my mind, the idea that it was a homogeneous and totally a, a protector and a very sturdy deity may have held me to maintain that uh, that, that uh, mental composite or perhaps the deity exists outside of ourselves as he says mm -hmm. uh, completely outside of, 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 of me as a man as a, as a feeler and uh, all it does is manifest itself now uh, I thought your your um, description of this image of Mescalito was uh, was very vivid and very impressive. Uh, do you think you could possibly, uh, just to draw out one aspect of the book, uh, describe what this figure seemed like to you? Oh, well, it was truly an anthropomorphic composite. It was, a, uh, it was not truly a man, but it was not, it looked like a cricket. And uh, it was very, uh, very large. Uh, perhaps larger than a man, and uh, it looks somehow like the uh, like the surface of a um, of the cactus, uh, the peyote cactus, and uh, that was the, the 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 top looked like a pointer head, but it had uh, human features in the sense of eyes and. A face. Yes. But uh, it was not quite uh, human either. It was something different about it. And the movements, of course, were quite extraordinary because they hopped. Mm. Now, when you described this uh, experience to, to Don Juan, uh, what, uh, how did he deal with it? Was this the no, right he, image? Or no, no, he didn't care at all about my description of the form. He was not interested at all. I never told him what the form he discarded it all. I wrote it down because it was quite remarkable for me as the man who experienced it. It was just extraordinary. Uh, it was truly a shocking experience. Thus, I record everything that I experienced, but insofar as telling him, he didn't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. He said that it was unimportant. All he wanted to hear was whether I had, how close he let me come in this anthropomorphic composite at the time I saw it, you know, let me come very close. I nearly touched him. In that, in Don Juan's uh, uh, system, I suppose, was uh, a, a very good turn. And uh, he was interested in knowing whether I, 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 whether I was frightened or not. 
you know, I was very frightened. Mm -hmm. But uh, insofar as the form, he never made any any comment, or he didn't even show any interest in. I'd like to uh, ask um, uh, about uh, one particular um, set of experiences. Um, we don't have to go into them in, in detail here. I think we might uh, simply tempt the, the listeners to look at the book and uh, read the actual details of the experience. But your final experience with Don Juan is one uh, of extreme uh, fearfulness. Um, uh, why do you think he led you into this, this final situation, at least final in your relationship with him, in which, I mean, he very literally seemed to scare the hell out of you. Uh, ah. uh, why, what was the purpose of that? It seemed almost, uh, as you record it, it seemed at points uh, almost deliberate cruelty. Uh, wh what do you think he was up to when he did that? Um, when the, um, he had previous to that last experience, the Duran, or uh, right before it, he taught me um, some position that uh, it's, it's, it's proper of shamans to adopt at moments of great crisis, uh, the time of their death, perhaps. It's a form that they would adopt, and um, it's, it's something that they would use. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of a validation, it's, a, it's the signature, let's say, that, or, or the proof that they have been men. Before they die, they will face their death and do this dancing. And then the, they will yell at death and die. And uh, I asked them, Juan, you know, what, uh, what would be so important? You know, what, since we all going to die, what difference does it make? Whether we dance or we cry or we scream or yell or run. And he felt, you know, that, that the question was very stupid because by having a form, a man could validate his existence. He could really uh, uh, rea uh, reaffirm that he was a man because essentially that's all we have. The rest is unimportant. At, at that very last moment, you see, uh, the only thing that could, a man could do was to reassert that he was a man. So he taught me this form. And in the course of the, the event, this very frightening set of uh, circumstances or actions, um, I was uh, forced nearly to, to exercise this form and use it. It brought a great uh, amount of uh, uh, vigor to me. And uh, the event uh, ended up there. In, uh, successfully, in quotes, I was successful in, in uh, perhaps uh, uh, staying away from death or something like that. Or the next day, the next night, uh, he took me into the bushes. And uh, what I was going to do was uh, he was going to teach me how to perfect this form until it was neat. And in the course of teaching me, I uh, found myself alone, and that's when the this horrendous fear <laughs> attacked me, really. And I think what uh, he had in mind was uh, for me to use this form, this position, this posture that he had taught me. And he deliberately scared me, I suppose, in order for me to test that. Uh, I see. And that was my failure, of course, because I, I really succumbed to fear. Instead of standing and facing my death, as he was, mm -hmm. I was supposed to, as a, as a, let's say, apprentice of this way of knowledge, I uh, became a thorough European man, and I <laughs> succumbed to fear. How did um, things actually uh, end then between you and Don Juan? The, the end of that night, I think, you know, I suffered a total ego collapse, because uh, Fear was just too great uh, for my resources, and it took hours to pull me back. Um, and it seems that uh, it, we came to an impasse. We had never talked ever again about about his knowledge. That's almost three years ago, I over see. three years ago. 
Oh, you feel yeah. then he had finally led you up to uh, an experience that uh, was beyond your capacity to grapple with. I, th I think so. I think the uh, I exhausted my resources. I see. And uh, I couldn't go beyond that. And it, it's coherent with the American Indian idea that knowledge is power. See, you mm. cannot uh, play around with it. In every new step, say, is a is a is a is a trial. And you had to prove that you're capable of going beyond that. I see. So that was my uh, that was my end. Yes, and yet over the six-year period, Don Juan led you through a, a great number of uh, terribly trying and difficult experiences. Yeah, I, I should say I I would, but uh, uh, he does not think that I have uh, that I'm finished by some I don't know for some strange reason he doesn't he has never acted as though. I'm through. He always thinks that is this period of clarification. Did he ever make it re uh, uh, really clear to you what, what it was about you that uh, led him to select you for this well, uh, vigorous uh, he, uh, he, uh, process? Well, he guides his acts by indications, by omens. If he sees something that is extraordinary, some event that he cannot uh, incorporate into his possibly his categorization scheme, if it, if it doesn't fit in it, he calls it a, a portentous event or, or an extraordinary event, and he considers that to be a omen. When I first took that um, cactus, look for William, see that, peyote, I uh, play with a dog. At, uh, it was a very remarkable experience in which this dog and I understood each other very well. And uh, that was interpreted by Don Juan as a as a nomen that the deity Mescalito Peyote had played with me, which was an event that he had never witnessed in his life. Nobody has ever, in his in his knowledge, nobody has ever played with the deity. He told me. Thus, it was extraordinary, and something was pointing mm. uh, me out, and he interpreted it as. Uh, that he I was the right person to transmit his knowledge or part of it or whatever. Well, now, after spending six years in uh, apprenticeship uh, to Don Juan, um, uh, what, may I ask, what difference this, in, this great adventure has, has made uh, to you personally? Well, he has uh, certainly uh, has given me a different uh, outlook in life. It's enlarged my uh, my sense of how important today is, I suppose. I uh, I think you know I I have um, I'm the product of my socialization. I like any other person of the Western world. I I have lived very much for tomorrow all my life. Uh, I sort of save myself up for for another great future, something of that order. And uh, it's only, um, uh, it was only with the, of course, with the terrible impact of Don Juan's teachings that I came to realize how important it is to to be here now. Uh, and it, it renders uh, the, the idea of entering into states to what I call non-ordinary reality. Instead of this, instead of disrupting the states of ordinary reality, they rendered them very meaningful. Uh, I didn't suffer any disruption or any disillusion uh, with what goes on today. I don't think it's a farce. Uh, while I could say that I, I would have tended to think that it was a farce before, I thought that I was disillusioned and I was, uh, I was an artist. So I did, did some work and art and uh, I felt, you know, that they, they, something was missing uh, uh, with my time, something mm -hmm. was wrong. Uh, but as I see it, you know, there's nothing wrong today. I, I cannot conceive uh, what's wrong anymore because it was vague to begin with. I never thought exactly what was wrong. But I alluded that it was a great area, that it was better than today. And I think that has been dispelled completely. I see. 
Do you have any plans of ever seeking out Don Juan again? No, no I, I see him as a friend. I see him all the time. I, oh, you, still, you still do? Uh, yes, I do. I, I'm with him. I have been with him lots of times since the last experience I narrated in the book. But uh, as far as seeking his teachings, I don't think I, mm -hmm. I would. I sincerely think that I, I don't have the mechanics. One uh, final question. Um, you make um, a heroic effort in the book uh, to make uh, sense of Don Juan's world view. Um, do you have any uh, idea of whether Don Juan took any interest or takes any interest in your world view, the one you're calling that of a European man? Well, uh, no, I think he's versed. Don Juan's very versed in what we, the Europeans, stand for. Uh, he's not uh, handicapped in that sense. He makes use. He's a warrior, and he makes use of his... Uh, he sets his life as, as a strategic uh, game. And he makes use of everything that he can. He's very versed in that. My effort to make sense of his world is... Uh, it's my own way of, uh, let's say, paying back to him for, for this grand opportunity. I think uh, if, no, if I don't make the effort to render his world as a coherent phenomena, he'll go by the way he has for hundreds of years as a nonsensical activity. Mm -hmm. When it is not nonsensical, it's not fraudulent, it's a very serious endeavor. Yes. Well, the outcome of your experiences with Don Juan is a, a, a really fascinating book. Uh, I, after reading it myself, I can certainly recommend it to the Pacifica audience. Uh, it is an adventure in a very different world than we ordinarily live in. Uh, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Castaneda, for making this time available to talk about the book and about your adventures. Uh, this is Theodore Rosak. Thank you.